Hello there. Global temperatures are rising and evidence suggests that combustion vehicles are one of its biggest contributors. As a promising member of the Paris Climate Change Agreement, Rwanda has laid out a roadmap to becoming a carbon neutral and climate resilient economy by 2050. And among the many steps is a transition to 100% e-mobility. Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. You're with me, Nerengwa Fiona Muthoni. In this episode, we take a look at Rwanda's ambitious transport policies, speak to private players in the sector, and hit the road to find out what's new in e-mobility. The air quality of Rwanda has been dwindling for some years now and this health hazard has not skipped the attention of the authorities at the Rwanda Environment Management Authority. Three main reasons. Uh, the first reason is on uh, the air pollution uh, reduction. Uh, Rwanda Environment Management Authority and uh, the Ministry of Environment conducted uh, a study in 2018 uh, on the inventory of air pollutants and uh, uh, source of uh, the air pollutants. And the study clearly indicated that the main sources of air pollution we have here in Chigari and other cities of Rwanda are from uh, transport, uh, 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 comb uh, engine combustion uh, 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 cars. Uh, therefore, uh, embracing uh, immobility electric cars will be one of the uh, mitigation measures to reduce uh, the air pollution we are having. Uh, the second reason uh, uh, which is triggering the embracing of uh, uh, immobility in Rwanda is the, also the reduction of uh, greenhouse gases emissions, which are the root causes of climate change. Uh, it is known worldwide that 24% uh, uh, of global emissions are coming from transport. Uh, and indeed, uh, in Rwanda, uh, we have uh, developed uh, uh, the uh, 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 action plan for climate change uh, uh, to implement the Paris Agreement. And through the action plan, we committed the country to reduce 38% of emissions. And indeed, among the 38% of emissions reduction we are targeting by 2030, 9% uh, of uh, emissions uh, uh, of emissions from uh, uh, energy-related sectors, including transport, will be reduced by embracing. Mm the immobility. To reduce its carbon emission by 38% by the year 2030, Rwanda is responding with creation of the right policies. Rwanda's immobility policy is an evolving policy. Uh, it is anchored on existing uh, uh, Rwanda's uh, policy, whether it be the green growth and climate resilient uh, strategy, as well as the transportation policy. And the whole ambition is to transition the country to a sustainable uh, mobility uh, system. With creation of policies, it will attract more private actors to step into green tech. Recently, one of the major players in the industry, Volkswagen Rwanda, installed electric charging stations at a few locations here in Kigali. <laughs> Knowing too well the importance of the right policies on ground to support e-mobility, the CEO to Volkswagen Rwanda shares a list of challenges facing the fledgling industry. I would say two uh, categories of problems. One is policy, the other one is infrastructure. In terms of policy, um, all policies of transport in, um, in the world, and in, fact in Africa in particular, are oriented towards transport that is based on fuel. The prices, the, the um, even somehow the the, the specifications of vehicle. Uh, when, when you're importing a vehicle, uh, you look at horsepower based on a combustion engine. Uh, so the shift towards immobility is coming with a shift of policy, and that has to happen. To, for example, I can give you an example. 
if you look at transport prices in public transport or even for taxis, the prices are regulated according to the f cost of fuel. Uh, now, uh, the cost of uh, electricity in transport is not yet catered for. Um, in terms of infrastructure, the electric vehicles um, uh, need, um, of course, charging stations, but also um, the issue of road condition is a problem because the, there here you, you're talking about a problem that can occur of uh, collusion uh, of the battery with, um, say, protruding stones. And so that's why we are careful uh, not to drive cars that uh, have a low ground clearance, electric cars with a low ground clearance on, on roads that are, that are not in good conditions. So that is also a problem that we have to address. Clean tech is often associated with higher rates. But as the technology around e-mobility shows promise in the country, could affordable asset financing be the solution? Now for electric vehicles, on top of asset financing in other parts of the world, you have subsidies. It's only, they only work with subsidies. Now in Africa, with the special space that we know, it may not be possible. That's why we need to mobilize international financing to see for example, for uh, fleet services in taxis or buses, how we can finance those vehicles that are still more expensive than fuel-based cars. Uh, and for that, that's why you need the policy, because you can only convince international financing institutions when there is a policy to, 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 to structure the whole sector. Um, so asset-based financing would not be enough for electric vehicles. On top of it, you need some sort of um, uh, long-term patient capital and then you can also have asset fina uh, based financing probably with private um, financial institutions while financial institutions mull over affordable asset financing governments will have to think of tax incentives and subsidies if immobility is to flourish here on the continent well, when you talk about uh, incentives, whether it's physical or non-physical, uh, you realize that once you make a good business case for any sector or any business, the potential for the actors, practitioners, both in private and public, to pick it up is there. Uh, for example, the government is putting a lot of enablers to ensure that these transitions run smoothly. And I think that's what you are seeing here for companies like uh, Volkswagen, you know, moving forward to uh, not only uh, establish their business, but also working uh, to put in the required infrastructure. So I think the basic uh, fundamental when it comes to the enabling environment for players is key to success. While the transition from combustion to electric can be a complicated process, the motor taxi market seems to be making this adjustment with a lot more ease. As Ampersand, a Rwandan startup and manufacturer of electrical motorbikes, booms here in Rwanda. Reception has been very positive, both from government and from customers. Uh, we have 7,000 drivers on our waiting list already. Uh, so, so the reception has actually been, been fantastic and uh, we believe the approach that we've taken is the right one, that's to put a vehicle on the road that is simply better and cheaper and just happens to be electric. So the, the fact that it's electric is sort of a side bonus, but really people don't have to do things uh, so differently from the way they did them before, particularly in the, the moto taxi market that we are so focused on. By twisting the notion on its head, Ampersand is manufacturing motors that are actually more economical than combustion motors. We've been working on a target of about five years as a, as a plan to electrify the, the, the whole moto fleet and, and having some success with. We, uh, that's, that's roughly the cost or the, the budget rather, uh, is, is pretty good value for money when you consider that we're talking about electrifying half of an entire country's mm. vehicle fleet, about 75,000 to 100,000 vehicles. That particularly, particularly now as the world is turning its attention so much to climate change, uh, particularly with the specific target of reducing emissions by half by, by 2030. As a climate conscious nation, Rwanda's transition to e-mobility will not only be good for improving its air quality, but also the economy.
We now have an abundance of electricity, grid electricity generation in, in the country. Uh, and indeed, across East Africa, there is a, there's a, there's an abundance of, of electricity uh, from the grid. On the other hand, uh, countries like Rwanda spend more on fuel imports than, than on anything else. And so for every, every US dollar or euro or pound that, uh, that Rwanda earns from exporting goods and coffee and tourism, uh, that, that a lot of that money has to go back out to buying fuel and trucking it in um, across halfway across the continent um, and buying fuel from Saudi Arabia and so on. Now, if we can eliminate uh, a, a healthy chunk of that, that's that's fantastic for for the economy. Even with a large market demand for e-motors, Ampersand 2 has to deal with a set of challenges in order to scale up its manufacturing and operations. The most important policy, the most important policy that uh, that's under consideration is the electricity tariff. Uh, you know, currently, uh, electric vehicles don't have their own special category, and and because they're new, which is fair enough, um, and so we're paying the the highest non non residential tariff, and that's the that's the biggest challenge, and that's a cost that we have to pass on to the customer at the moment, um, and so the the. Under consideration, the, the reductions in that tariff or creating a special EV tariff under consideration is, is very, very positive and we, we look forward to that uh, passing through. With 170,000 personal motor vehicles and 1,500 buses, a complete transition from combustion to electric will save around millions of dollars on fuel imports. As estimated, electrical motorbikes will require about half the amount at 14 million US dollars for electricity as compared to 23 million US dollars for fuel, and along with saving on fuel. Electric vehicles are estimated to represent 9% of potential energy-related emissions mitigated under the country's climate action plan. The government of Rwanda uh, uh, conducted a feasibility study on immobility deployment uh, uh, by 2030. And the study indicated that uh, the government of Rwanda should target a 30% share of electric motor motorcycles uh, which are uh, many uh, uh, by 2030, and also uh, uh, on the uh, uh, single electric cars, uh, the study portrayed that we have potentials uh, uh, of achieving 80% by 2030. Buses will be at 20%, uh, and also uh, the electric tax and mini uh, 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 buses will be at 25%. Rwanda may be a small country, but it has big plans for its future. And by committing to its green objectives, it has joined other climate-conscious nations in leading the fight for our one and only home, Earth. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. You're with me, Nayungwa Fiana Muthoni.